Okay guys, we're going to be playing a new game today called Kathy Rain. So uh, let's get the show on the road. This is um, this is a point and click adventure. So let's uh, see how it goes. New game, never played this before, so interested to see exactly what it's all about. Hey, you. Uh, hey. Okay, so I think this is Kathy over. Oh on the left. man. Oh God, this is so comfy. I'm just gonna lie here and suffocate on my own vomit now. I, uh, I had a thing I wanted to tell you. Uh-huh. This room sure looks different when it's spinning. So I was browsing through the used book ads in the paper when I... Listen, Eileen, I'm totally excited about books right now, but... Wait, hear me out! So I noticed this article about a war veteran from Conwell Springs who just died. I remembered that you used to live there and everything, and... Oh, how I wish for joyful, blissful sleep. A and get this! His name was Joseph. Joseph Rain. What did you just say? You knew him, right? I knew it! I knew you'd know him! Okay, so we need to try and figure out who this uh, Joseph Rain was. Um, yeah. yeah, he is... was my grandfather. I guess he was. Hey, wait a minute. I never told you where I grew up. Oh, well, I, uh, well, I might have sort of looked you up. That is not cool, Eileen. Seriously. I just couldn't help myself. Well, one of these days you're going to help yourself to a restraining order. I'm just telling you this as a friend. I know. So this well, character... anyway, you should know that the funeral is tomorrow. Over on the right okay. is Eileen. This Are one you going to go? I don't right. know. Good night, Eileen. Good night, Kathy. They seem to be dorm room friends. I don't know if this is a college setting, university. September 25th, 1995, day one. Okay, so it's actually set in the 90s. Oh, Ooh, can we turn that off? Turn off alarm clock, yeah, looks like we can. Looks like Eileen left a note for me here. Hi, Kat. Since it's such a long drive, I set the alarm so you won't miss the funeral. Thank me later, E. I'm so getting a new roommate. Well, I guess I should get going. I'm late enough as it is. Okay, so... Mess up. <laughs> okay, let's do that. <laughs> Would be fun, but a bit too childish. Even for me. Oh, that's a shame. Okay, let's check this. Eileen's suitcase. girly suitcase. There's a sticker on it with her full name. Eileen Mildred Summers. Eileen Mildred Summers, okay. So I can certainly see the appeal of blindly rummaging through Eileen's clothes, but seriously, I've got better things to do. Okay, so even though it's point and click, it looks like we are actually limited to what we can and can't do. Let's just go over and check. It's some advanced scanner, scanner. thingy. It can scan pictures, tapes, all sorts of stuff computer you can think about look Eileen borrowed it from school she takes a bunch of computer classes Okay. color printer super fancy apparently a fact which Eileen loves to remind me of okay it's various posters we'll just look at one and then we'll uh, the thing leave. one of my favorite horror movies Ah, okay, so that's the thing. Well, this one over here looks like the Titanic, so let's just That movie's not out yet. It's a promo poster Eileen got for being an extra. She tells everyone who walks in here the same joke. Spoiler alert, the boat sinks. Oh, okay, well, that's interesting because um, the Titanic... I mean, this is based in 1995. The Titanic came out in... When did it come out? That's a good question. Um... Um, I'm gonna double check that it came out in. Let's just leave the room. As Messy, we just the way out. I like it. 1997. So it actually came out two years after 
this game is set to be uh, based in. So. Cemetery. Okay, so we've just made it over to the cemetery. Well, here we are. God, I really need a smoke. Does anyone object? Guess not. Dead people rule. No time for that now. I'm late for the funeral. Okay, so we need to actually make our way over to the funeral, which here it is. Quite a morbid scene. We are gathered here today to honor a person of great integrity, a pillar of the community, and a decorated war hero. His name was Joseph Irving Rain. We all remember his warm heart, his compassion, and his eagerness to help others. His passing while our loss is surely heaven's gain. Now we entrust our brother Joseph to God's mercy. We commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our frail bodies so they may be conformed to his glorious body, who died, was buried, and rose again for us. To him be glory forever. Amen. Definitely quite a morbid. Oh, morbid Kathy, scene. you big baby, just talk to her. Mrs. Rain. We can look at Mrs. Rain. Let's look Mary at Elizabeth Rain. Rain, my grandmother on my father's side. Okay, well, that explains who she is. Let's talk to her. Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Rain? Have we met, hon? You look strangely familiar. It's me. It's Catherine. Catherine who? You don't recognize me? I guess it's been a while. I might be a bit taller than you remember me. Kathy? Bless my soul. Look at you, all grown up. Oh, how I wish Joseph could see you now, finally coming home. Let's hope he can, wherever he is. A comforting thought, dear. Lord, how long has it been? Ten years? Fifteen? Fifteen sounds about right. I was six when Mom took me away. Goodness, we have some catching up to do then. <laughs> I want to know everything. Listen, I'm not quite ready to leave yet, but why don't you join me at the house in half an hour? Sure, I'd love to. I passed it on my way here. It shouldn't be too hard to find. I'll see you soon, then. I'm so glad you found your way back home. I can't wait for us to have a chance to talk. Same here. See you in a bit. The coffin is lowered, but the grave hasn't been filled up yet. Rest in peace, Grandpa. I wish things could have been different. I never thought I'd return to this place. Okay, so she's clearly been to this part of town before. I'm sorry for your loss. Thanks. If you wish to find God, the Church of the Holy Trinity is always open to you. Is that so? Here, have a brochure. It's never too late to turn away from the path of sin. Yeah, that, that's a good question. What makes you so sure I'm on a sinful path? And what makes you so sure I'm on a sinful path, Father? Wouldn't you say that prejudice is but a small step from the seven big ones? I simply meant that we are all sinful creatures, child. I hope to see you at the church. Don't get your hopes up, buddy. I'll pray for you. I wish you comfort in this time of grief. Okay, this is interesting. Back on the bike we go. So it looks as if all of the 
uh, chapters to this story are going to be kind of a case of we drive to them. Um, so, so far we've been to the cemetery. Next we've got the Rain Residence. Never played this game before, so it's quite interesting to see how it plays out. Not a massive uh, point and click fan, have played a few of them in the past, so let's go on to the Rain Residence and see what's in store for us here. Grandma, anybody home? There's a red horse. Cute red horse. It's some old Swedish thing, I think. Some nice attention to detail because it does look, um, although it's a little bit pixelated, it does look quite uh, like Swiss. It would be that kind of thing. You can see the sort of blue, white, and red colours on it. An old wheelchair. Not too dusty. Probably used recently. Okay. Got some a boots. mere single pair of boots on display. Boy, do we live in different worlds. Dog fighting. Grandpa used to love that stuff. When it says dog fighting, it's talking about uh, sort of World War II stuff, I think. Let's check the. Firmware. These should come in handy when I need to make calls. Some kind of winter forest scene. I've always wondered if it's supposed to be Conwell Woods or not. Let's go through the living room door. I think we've got the option to go upstairs as well. Oh, hello, dear. I was just wondering what took you so long. Sorry, I couldn't resist taking that old wheelchair for a spin. Oh, don't give me that look. I put it back. You haven't changed one bit. Always kidding around, just like when you were little. Come have a seat. We have so much to talk about. So, now, tell me about your life in the city. Oh, there's not much to tell. I'm going to school for journalism. It's my second year. I ride a motorcycle in case you missed it there out front. Ah, oh, that's right. Just like your father. Yeah, I suppose. I must ask, have you heard anything from your father? Anything at all? No, nothing since he bailed way back then. I expected as much. He disappeared without a trace. No matter, that's ancient history. How Sharon, then? Mom is... I had her committed to a place where she could get some real help. I just couldn't take it anymore. I'm sorry to hear that. In spite of everything that happened when she took you away. Yeah, about that. I'm sorry I didn't visit sooner, Grandma. Mom, she told me all these horrible lies about you and Grandpa. When I was old enough to understand what she was doing, I felt like it was much too late. It wasn't your fault, dear. You were a child. I'm just happy that you're here now. Me too. So what about you? How have you been doing all these years? I've been lonely ever since the accident. There's no denying that. What accident? Goodness gracious. Of course you don't know. She took you away before it all happened. Don't know what? I will never forget that dreadful day. August 16th, 1981. It was the middle of the night when Sheriff Truman knocked on our door. He had Joseph with him. I couldn't even recognize Joseph at first. All dirty and wet with an awful blank stare on his face like his soul had been ripped from his body. Since that day, he never spoke a word, forever confined to that blasted wheelchair. Really? For all this time? I had no idea. It came as a shock to all of us. That's horrible, Grandma. I'm so sorry. Thank you, dear. So the incident in 81, okay. Why do you think Grandpa suddenly left that night in 81? I haven't the faintest idea. He acted very peculiar not long before it happened, disappearing for hours at a time. At first I even suspected he was having an affair. When I asked him about it, he just said he was chasing old demons. He must have had something to do with the war. Okay, so we did kind of mention something about the war. We saw the dog fighting poster, so that's obviously related. 
Maybe PTSD. Maybe it was post-traumatic stress disorder. Grandpa always had a hard time showing weakness. I don't know, dear. I I'm just speculating. I didn't think too much of it at the time. Joseph was a man of few words. I'm sure he just didn't wish to burden me with it, whatever it was. What do the doctors have to say about Grandpa's condition? Persistent vegetative state. That's what they call it. I've heard it all by now. One doctor said it was a stroke. Another claimed it was a seizure. The third hack tried to sell it off as a severe infection. It's all a load of tripe. I had an MRI performed on Joseph. It's one of those state-of-the-art head scans. Yeah, I've heard of them. Yes, well, according to the scan, his brain was completely intact. They thought it was a technical problem at the time, some kind of glitch. But the result was the same after three different scans on three different machines. Eventually, they had to confess that they simply had no credible explanation for the state he was in. Hmm. And this injury just happened to occur on the very same night he mysteriously disappears? Indeed. I refuse to believe it was a coincidence. What did Sheriff Truman have to say about the matter? Not much. He said they simply found Joseph in that condition on the outskirts of town. The sheriff was convinced there was some kind of foul play involved, but the investigation turned up nothing. He later said that he was sorry, but that he was forced to close the case. You know, I could try to find out more about this. You're welcome to try, dear. Some kind of closure would mean the world to me. Okay, I think I'll head over to the sheriff station for a little chat then. Would be nice to witness police doing some actual police service for once. Sure, you go ahead. Let me know if I can be of any more help. See you later, Grams. Take care, dear. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's on your mind? So I just wanted to check. I don't want to show her that. Notebook. These must be things in the bag. So I don't notebook. want to show her that. She'll just start worrying about me. So we've got a zipper lighter and church brochure. What do you think about this church, Grandma? Let's see what she thinks. They seem this. harmless to me, but they can be a bit pushy at times. Huh? <laughs> you could say that. Handing out pamphlets at funerals is in pretty bad taste. Awfully strange behavior for a priest, I'll give you that. That's a good point. That's... I don't want to show her that. Bye, Grandma. I'll be back later. So long. Okay, let's check this portrait. Grandpa in his Air Force uniform. Looks to be in his early 20s. Nice leather chair. Freckles, the old farm cat, used to love that thing. I used to love digging through those drawers when I was a kid. Grandpa and me, we had this game where he would hide pennies around the house and I would go on a treasure hunt. Never in the attic, though. I thought it was too scary up there. A decent-sized book collection. Most of them science or history related from the looks of it. Okay, so I think we might as well go up to the attic. She just mentioned it was too scary, so... I shouldn't overstay my welcome. Oh, okay. We can't go there. A small table lamp. Okay, let's leave and... Oh, you can hear the rain outside. Okay, so moving on to our next location now, which is the Sheriff's Station. Um, we're now... How long have we been playing this? We've been playing for around about 18 minutes. Apparently it's a six hour game. The pace seems to be quite fast. Land of the free. Not their peak hours, it seems. Which is good. Fax machines. The pinnacle of modern technology. I guess set in 1995, a fax machine hey, sure. probably would What's be... What's the deal with that bum? the latest in uh, technology. The one in the cell. A bunch of cops so lining up for a photo. Well, shit. Some young cop. Looks a bit familiar. Hi. 
Hello. Do I? Ma'am, I'm really quite busy at the moment. Hey, wait. I know you. I'm pretty sure you don't. Yes, surprise, surprise. I do. You're Kathy. Kathy Rain. My reputation precedes me in a kind of but not totally creepy way. Aw, oh, come on. It's me, Lenny. Lenny Marks. Oh, right. Lenny. Long time no see, buddy. Ain't that the truth? I suppose you came to town for the funeral? Yep, that's right. Sorry for your loss. Joseph was a great guy before, well, you know. Yeah, he really was. So, uh, anyway, what can I do for you today? Okay, so this is interesting then. Um, this guy claims to sort of recognize us, Lenny. Um, let's go and ha <laughs> excuse me, let's go ahead and I wanted to ask if you know anything incident. about my grandfather's accident. I really don't know much beyond the rumors. The sheriff may have more information, but even he probably doesn't know anything that isn't in the report. It happened before either of us worked here. Okay, I think I'll have a chat with the sheriff then. Sure thing. His office is to your right. Okay. Well, gotta go. See ya. Let's go talk to the sheriff. I don't know who that Lenny guy was. I like the way when you hover over him it gives his name. Because no doubt I'll probably forget <laughs> a bit later on into the game. Hello, Sheriff. Do you have a moment? Not really. Make it quick. Okay, let's quickly Do you know what happened this. to Joseph Rain in 81? He had a stroke in the woods. That's what happened. If that's all there is, why would Sheriff Truman open an investigation? It was just standard procedure. A general occurrence report always has to be filed. I see. Did you know him at all? No, I haven't been in town for long. Man sure has one hell of a reputation, though. It's been over a decade since he was put in that wheelchair, and people still talk about the man he used to be. It's like he was a cult leader or something. Sounds like a conspiracy theory to me. Could be, but you know what they say. Things too good to be true usually are. Okay, so this, this is even more interesting now. Something happened in 1981. We don't quite know what it was. It was 14 years before 1995, which is when the game is set. Could I have a look at that report? So, Absolutely not. They were official police documents. Why not? I thought filed police reports are public record. Not in this state, they ain't. But I'm family. Doesn't that count for something? You consider yourself family? I've never even seen you before in this town. It's complicated. Guess what's complicated? Not to mention illegal. Handing out evidence to anyone who asks for it. Lenny, a little help here? Don't you agree that he's taking by the book too far? Well, uh, boss, she is his granddaughter, really. I don't think it's any... Don't you think I know that? There are rules. Am I the only one in here who cares about the law? Too much coffee? <laughs> Try not to pop a vein. You want to see the inside of a cell? Oh, cuff me, officer. Spare me the torment of your rhetorical questions and veiled threats. Just follow the rules like everyone else. I've had enough of this nonsense. Fine. Okay, so the sheriff was uh, less than useful, really. He's not really given us any leads to go on. So let's go through these. Um... Not sure where those doors lead. I should go check it out. Yeah, that's where I was thinking of going. Let's go through the double doors. How's the paperwork coming along, Lenny? See where that uh, takes us. Okay, I guess. Maybe. Not much in here. Looks like an incarcerated bum. An incarcerated bum, okay. Let's talk to him, see if he has any hey. information. What? I can't hear you! Doesn't look like he does. Um, what a tiny TV. Nice! That was getting annoying. Oh, maybe he'll talk to us now. Hey. Hi there! So, why'd they put you in that cell? Uh, well, uh, it, it's all just a big misunderstanding. Is that so? Yeah, I, I didn't mean to steal anything. I was just using my pockets to move the beer to the checkout. That's the worst excuse I have ever heard. For your information, I happen to have a deadly fear of shopping carts. I take my last statement back. This excuse is even worse. 
Hey, it wasn't your father who was killed by a shopping cart when you were eight. Uh, I sure hope not. To be fair, mine wasn't either. It was just Uncle Bob. But that doesn't mean it was any less traumatic, mind you. To this day, I still get nervous breakdowns at grocery stores. I think I've heard enough, buddy. You're right. We should stop before the flashbacks begin. Okay, this is a little bit strange. Okay, let's persuade him to distract Lanny. I wonder what we can... You need to keep the blonde cop out there busy for a while. I do? Ten bucks says you do. Hmm. I'd say my services in this matter are worth at least twenty bucks. Nine. Fifteen. Eight. Fine. Ten. Seven. <sighs> Deal. Good. So, uh, what am I doing again? Distract that young cop in the lobby. I don't care how you do it, as long as you keep him occupied for a while. Okay, then. Let me know when. Will do. Huh. Very funny. Too heavy to carry around and too noisy to use in here. I'll need a key. Right, so I think I get this. I think we're after a key then, aren't we? So let's exit this um, this room. Let's go speak to. Hey, oh, Lenny. sorry. I just heard someone yelling. Uh, I think that guy in the cell needs some help. Ah, <sighs> oh, what now? Okay, I have to make this quick. Hasn't the sheriff seen us? Okay. I see a bunch of keys to the evidence lockers. I could take one, but I need to know what I'm looking for first. Damn. Okay. Right. We need to go quickly back into into the cell. I should use this time to poke around. Yeah. I should use this time to poke around. Oh. Okay. So we need to go back to the desk. And. What else can we actually... I see a bunch of get? keys to the evidence. Should we check the bulletin board? A little bit confused with... Various um, notices and a wanted poster. What we're supposed to do right now. Let's check the phone. Might want to pick up the handle for... Eight three five two. Hi, this is Eileen speaking. Hey, it's me, Kat. Oh, hi, what's up? I'm trying to get a hold of a police report concerning Grandpa, but the cops refuse to give it to me. Yep, the state laws are really strict about that sort of thing. Ugh, there must be some way to get my hands on it. Sure, but... Probably not within the boundaries of the law, Kathy. Am I hearing this right? Are you encouraging criminal behavior, E? Oh, I would never! I don't need to ask her about that. Okay, gotta go. Talk to you later. Bye, Kathy! Okay, so Eileen, who was the a dorm room a girl from before... Might be something useful in there. ...has suggested that we take another look through the through the desk and do some illegal activity. I see activity. a bunch of keys to the evidence lockers. I could take one, but I need to know what I'm looking for first. So, how can we actually let's check these files. Maybe Okay, let's have a look. Maybe they'll tell us what kind of key we need. Okay, so an individual was encountered on the side of the dirt road Oh, this is in 1981. 16th of August. A few miles from Commonwealth Springs, blindly walking forward with his eyes wide open. The subject was identified as Joseph Rain. He did not respond when touched or spoken to. He appeared to be dirty from head to toe and wet up to his knees. Mr. Rain was fiercely clutching a small tape recorder, complete with a tape. Being cooperative, he could be led into the squad car and transported back into town. Picked up emergency. Uh, sorry, where did I get the word emergency from? Uh, picked up Mrs. Rain and brought her along with Mr. Rain to the emergency room at the community clinic. Okay, that was at 12:25 p.m. And then at 8 a.m. the following day, up 
Upon routine inspection of the patrol car, a tape recorder was found discarded in the back seat, filed as evidence in locker number five. Okay, so I think we need to get to locker number hmm, five. I'm gonna have to get my hands on that recorder. Okay, let's find the key to locker number five. Got it. Perfect. Okay, so we've nearly been playing for half an hour and already we're making some significant progress. So Lenny's just come back to his desk. Lenny, I need you to do something. How can I help, boss? It's my mother's birthday this weekend. The sheriff's now asking for some uh, help. Let's speak to the bum. Hey. Hi there. Okay, okay so gotta go. Already, See ya. He's already distracted, Lenny, so we can just go Brilliant right idea. over. Over here, evidence lockers, and open it up, hopefully. All right, got it. Excellent. Right now, let's see if we can talk to the bun. This is just a total hey. guess. I'm not playing hey. this with a guide. But uh, let's... Could you distract Lenny again? Sure, I needed to puke again anyway. Good to know. Let's distract Lenny one more time and see if we can put the key back because I'm guessing guess that might be a good idea. He's having some kind of fit in there. Not again. Here we go again. Okay, so. Files. Let's go back to the files once more. I already got the report. Sure, just got the report. That's fine. I got the key already. I don't think I need to mess with that anymore. Okay, she's not going to put the key back then. Might be something useful in there. Um. Fax machines. Is there anything else we can do while we're here? Nah, I should use this time to poke around. Use the phone one more time. Can we go into our notebook? I'll write down clues in this as I find them. Okay. Police report. I actually think we're done here, so let's make towards the exit. Okay, and it looks as if we've successfully completed the sheriff station. There's no other thing pop up here, so let's go back to the rain residence. And we need to find a tape recorder of some sort. Can we go upstairs to do this? I shouldn't overstay my welcome. Let's go through the living room door. Oh. Let's speak to Grandma. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's on your mind? I already talked to her about that. Okay, so we've got nothing new to talk to her about. Maybe we I got the dictaphone the already. Report. I don't think there's anything else in there I need to mention to her. Okay. Bye, Grandma. So long. Let's go back out through the door. Maybe we can just listen to this in the in the front the house. Let's go to the police report. Dictaphone. Uh, examine. Note to self. Remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. I've been working on my research in the attic at night. I just don't want her to worry. She has enough to think about with everything that's been going on lately. With Sharon and Kathy. Anyway, I'm getting closer to finding the source. I have a theory, but I need help. I'm gonna have to involve somebody else. Okay, so the attic is actually on our next next step. So let's go upstairs. I should probably ask Grandma first. Okay, we need permission. Let's go ask Grandma for permission. Oh, hello, dear. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's on your mind? Let's mention the attic. Would you mind if I took a look in the attic? I suppose it would do no harm. Come with me. 
Thanks, Grandma. You're welcome, dear. Be careful now. Okay. So, light. The bulb looks burned out. I'll have to replace it. Nothing. That sucks. So it looks as if we can't do a single thing without the light bulb, so let's get back downstairs. Um, I guess we're going to have to get back into the living room. Talk to Grandma about. Oh, hello, dear. A new light bulb? Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's on your mind? The lights are out in the attic. Oh, well, there should be a whole box of light bulbs around here somewhere. Do you remember where? Now, where did I put it? Oh, dear, I think it's in the attic. That's just terrific. I'm sure you'll figure it out, dear. Um. Well, gotta go, Grams. Talk to you later. Bye, Kathy. Okay. Um, it looks as if there's no easy way of doing this. I think what we're going to have to do is just take a look around the house. Um, there's a table lamp here. Remove the bulb. Oh, okay. Maybe we can just use this one. Free uh, light bulb. Yeah, let's go upstairs. Replace that light bulb. The bulb looks burned out. I'll have to replace it. How do we do that? Let's see if we can go into the bag. Uh, I think. There we go. That's easy. There. We Use the light switch. Well, hey, we're cooking on gas. Okay, that was easy enough. Um, right, what can we do? Briefcase. Briefcase here. Don't know what the code is to get in. Let's just try all ones. Nope, that's not it. No, I didn't think that would be. Um, how can we figure this out? So this is uh, becoming a bit more of a, like a puzzle game now. We've got some drawers we can uh, look into. Nothing. An old typewriter covered in cobwebs. Okay. Right, what I'm actually going to do, guys, I'm going to save the game. And uh, because we've been playing now for around about 36 minutes, close, closing in on 40 minutes, I'll try and make each episode around about 30 to 40 minutes, just so we don't lose interest. Um, I'm going to save the game and uh, come back to this in another episode and uh, hopefully you'll tune in because it's quite an interesting story I'm wondering what's gonna happen it's it's definitely got that detective novel kind of vibe to it um, and it's such a low price on Steam right now that really it just seemed like a no-brainer to actually get hold of it so thanks for tuning in thanks for watching this and uh, definitely stay tuned for part two which will be up in the next few days